All right. Hi, everybody. For day two, I'm Andrew Silk, and this is the second day of doing this long course. And uh, I was going to talk about Lego, and uh, we're going to get dive straight in and start doing stuff in, in Maya and, uh, and building the model. But instead, I thought we'd come and talk about talent and a few things. This is just, uh, I'm going to do a few, uh, a few different videos in order to set you guys up for the course, which is a really long course. So um, it's worth doing a, a few short videos on um, just a bit of the psychology that I'll try to talk my students through. It's nice to put it all in a compact form. I usually like scatter this throughout many lessons with my, uh, the, the students that I'm mentoring, but um, here I can, you know, condense it and put it in the video and, and actually just send it to them, <laughs> which will be pretty good. So um, this one is about talent. And uh, what is the problem of talent? Well, the problem with talent is that people think you have to be talented in order to do things. And I think this is especially, especially important when it comes to art. So there is a bit of a, a how would you say it, a myth in the world and the myth of the uh, very talented artist uh, comes to mind. Now, there is definitely a thing as talent. Uh, you can see uh, I've got Usain Bolt here for a reason. And uh, the man is is definitely talented at running. Uh, there's there's no way that you can argue against that. Usain Bolt is a talented runner. However, people can always run faster. And if Usain Bolt never trained, then there's probably a lot of people in the world that would be able to beat him. Uh, a lot of professional runners who train and train and train would be able to beat Usain Bolt even at his peak if he just sat on the couch and ate potato chips all day. So the point is we can always get better. So even if you have no you know, physical talent, you can always train and become a faster runner. Uh, you know, you can always get better. Now with art, I found you can get spectacularly better. I think with running, it's a bit of a hard metaphor. So a better metaphor that I like to talk about is learning a language. In this case, this is Japanese. So in Japan, everybody can speak Japanese. So therefore, Japanese is a very easy language to learn in theory because everyone in Japan can speak it as long as you don't have a, a, a brain um, disability of some kind, then everyone in the country can speak Japanese. Now, if you are Japanese, we can uh, talk about Swahili. And if you're Swahili, you can speak Swahili, then we can talk about Japanese. There's always a different language, right, uh, that we don't know. And everyone knows it's kind of intuitively that learning a language is difficult if you don't speak the language and you haven't spoken it all your life. However, the point is, if you can speak the language uh, and you've grown up with it, it's actually extremely easy to speak that language. So there's a bit of a dichotomy there. It's both easy because even people who are relatively low on the IQ level can speak the language, but it's also extremely difficult because anyone who wasn't brought up in that environment is uh, going to have trouble with speaking. Swahili or Japanese or whatever language that you don't know. So how does this relate back to 3D animation and modeling and, and all the different things that we're trying to learn, like in this general pipeline and people saying, hey, Silk, yeah, I thought that 3D was hard and, and here you are trying to teach us, you know, many different disciplines and not just one. Um, so let's move on to the point of that. Well, the, the point is if you immerse yourself in something for long enough like art, are going to get better. Now, you're going to get better compared to where you ordinarily would have been. Now, you might not become the next Leonardo uh, da Vinci. You may not become the, the next Michelangelo, but you can get better. You can get much better than where you already are. And unlike Usain Bolt, who we opened with, um, and I'll talk about this later in another video, but we don't have to be in a, at Olympic level to get paid to do this job. Um, of 3D, you know, we're talking about industry jobs here if you want to get paid to do this for a living. You just have to be good enough to, you know, join the thousands and thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands of people that do this for a living. Like this is not you know, the top 30 people in the world that would be in the Olympics for you know, the 100 meter sprint. This is, this is really a, a lot of people that you're competing against. So you don't have to be at an Olympic level. You just have to be decent. Um, in order to be valuable to a company that can hire you and start making um, things for movies, games, and uh, architecture or whatever you want to get into in this 3D realm. So here we have uh, good old Boris. Boris is a, a student of mine. 
Hi, Boris, if you're watching this. Um, this was a, a model that he came to me and showed me quite early on. Um, and he already created some pretty good stuff. I think he was already working in Arch Archviz. Um, and, he, and he showed me this alien model. And I was like, that's an alien model, right? He's like, no, no, it's supposed to be this, you know, a pretty girl who can, uh, you know, attract men and kill them. And I was like, okay, well, we have some work to do. So Boris went away and I'll, I'll talk about Boris in a, a later video. But he went away um, and, and started working on that. Next, we have a sim. And uh, a sim's model, you know, came to me uh, a little bit in a more of an advanced stage. I think he put a bit more work into this model. Um, definitely looking pretty decent. But, uh, you know, he was doing Michael Fassbender. And I was like, you know, this doesn't really look like Michael Fassbender, the, the actor um, at the time. So we were going to work on it some more. This is what he showed me. Um, and then we've got Josh. And this is my favorite. Josh uh, came to me with this line. He's, it's like a fantasy lion and he wanted to make it better. Uh, and so uh, this is what he presented. And I was like kind of cringing inside and, uh, and uh, we went and started to make this better. So here are the results of these students over, uh, you know, many months in some of these cases, uh, you know, they kept working on these models and making them better and, and doing other things. So first we'll start with Boris and uh, this is what he presented. And I wish I had more because there's so many students that have shown me this sort of before and after work. It's quite amazing, you know, to, to present. So sort of keeping myself, these are very old students too, by the way. Um, so Boris is one there. And then uh, we went away and, you know, here's what he ended up with. Something that's a lot um, better. I wish I had a, a nice render of that. He's got a few on his blog. I'll, I'll bring that up and refer to it in a later lesson. But you can see the difference between, you know, this weird alien creature and uh, someone who's, Got a bit of sass and attitude that came uh, quite a long way. Um, we've got a uh, good old a Sims model here of Michael Fassbender and pushing it. And now we had to animate this so it's not a zebra sculpt. And this is like back in 2014 or something. This is quite old, October 2012. Wow, um, I've been teaching for a while. Um, so, you know, zebra aside and things like that that we see modern day stuff. Um, you can see the beginning the before and after. So here we've got, you know, something that looks a lot more, I hope like Michael Fassbender, it might not look exactly like him. It doesn't have all the wrinkles and stuff, but we did put a rig in this and it looks quite nice. I have to fight. I'll have to dig that up for the proper video when I do this over on create 3d characters. Um, but you can see the difference between the models there, you know, the before and after is quite striking. Now, if you're hearing the beeping in the background there, it just happened. Just ignore that. It's my, um, the alarm that goes off every now and again. So, it's difficult for me to switch off. In fact, and, um, unfortunately, it's connected to my internet. Um, I will endeavor to stop that in future shoots. Um, and here we have Josh. So we started with this one, which is this fantasy lion creature that had like armor and wings and stuff. I think these were supposed to be wings here. And there was a zebra sculpt that he'd done very early on. Again, this is a long time ago, the June 2013. Um, and then uh, what he ended up with with the model. Uh, you know, we didn't have a lot of reference, good reference of the wings and the fantasiness and the feathers and ours, and we wanted to animate this and, and make it run around. And I was like, how about we just do a lion, like a regular lion, and we'll work that because we can get a lot of reference, good reference from lions. And you can see the before and after of the lion from, from this um, to this model. And then a sim, sorry, Josh went a lot further uh, and then ended up animating this with fur and everything. And you can sort of see that here. Um, in the lion. Now, he was not an animator by any stretch. If any animators are watching, there is a little bit wrong with that cycle. Let's just go back here. Um, however, you can see it's quite amazing how far people can come when, you, you know, people are presenting this sort of stuff to me. And then, you know, later on is this. Now, I'm not going to talk about how long this took. This took quite a long time. I'm going to talk about that in another video. But, um, even so, I think it's quite incredible that uh, a student can can go from this and and then to that. I, th I think it's it's amazing, and this is what why I sort of talk about talent and and where you are. I think that you can really get a lot better than what you think you can when you're starting out in this journey. Um, it does take good mentoring and you know people with an eye and and learning the right things. You can get lost very easily in CG. Um, but I just want to sort of bring up that it is possible to radically change and improve over time. So just the end here, I've got um, a bunch, a little video of, of some of the student work. 
that created with me. This is from 2015. So again, I haven't <laughs> updated Reels for quite a while. Um, that's seven years ago. So technology has changed a lot since then. But these are a lot of my old students when I was teaching a lot. Like I, at one stage, I had quite a lot of students. And this is the reel from 2015. Different things like lots of uh, different types of work. Some animations, some just models. Uh, lots of varied work um, in this reel. And uh, so I'm really hoping um, to develop a course now that I've taught for another seven years after this. And there's a course in my head that I've, I've kind of radically changed from these early days that I think we can get better results uh, without having the length of time that you need these students spent on some of these pieces was insane, which I'll talk about um, next. I think you see this stuff and it all goes by so quickly. And you're like, wow, a bunch of students did that um, in mental ray, which is not the greatest renderer in the world. Um, this one here by Jay, this Hobbit hole. <laughs> but, you know, like, the amount of time that it takes to get some of these pieces up to scratch and the amount of work that goes into them. Um, here you go, Albatross, go and check that out online. I'll, I'll put a link um, so you can check that one out. It's got, you know, millions of views. And th these guys, that the team that made this, I'll talk about in a later video as well. Um, the Alex's and, and Joel. And they've done very well for themselves. So, you know, they created a whole film there that had millions of views. So there's, there's lots that you can do. And I can show you their progression in a later video. Here's my old logo. Um, for the site, obviously create 3D characters, go check it out. But um, we're going to continue in the next um, little while, in the next few videos and, and sort of talk on these themes that, you know, are more psychologically based just for, you know, maybe five more videos to sort of get you guys prepped um, for the real meat of the course. And we'll start with Lego and I'll, I'll explain, you know, the long course of going in and doing much more than Lego. Lego is the beginner stuff and we'll talk about getting to the end game which is working on big movies and I'll talk a little bit about my career and things I think that would be a good way to go just as I try to do videos every day so there you go guys um, that's the one for today on talent talent don't worry about it too much um, just put your head down and work and if you immerse yourself in this stuff you can get good if you just do a couple of hours a week um, and you're learning Swahili you're not going to get very good this is just a reality um, you, if you want to go and learn Swahili, best thing go to Africa, sit down and speak it every day and don't speak any English. Um, so that metaphor applies to 3D as well. Like if you're competing against professionals, they are doing it 40 to 50 hours a week. That is a lot of time every week. Very hard to catch up to them if you're only practicing, you know, an hour a day or even an hour a week. Some students have expected to get results and that's just, it's just a little bit of a pipe dream. So um, make sure that you do have, if you want a, a career in this, make sure that you do have the, the time and the energy for this. Um, it can be a really rewarding career, um, uh, doing something that's quite challenging and competitive and getting in there and doing it um, as an artist, getting paid, uh, really good rewards, but you know, you have to be into it. You have to work hard. There's just no way around that. So there you go, guys. I'll, I'll leave it at that.